Nice dope. More dope. Come and get your fix. What's up, fuckers? Your boy's back with a fresh batch of dope. Knife dope. What's up, people? Yep. Got a new uh, new brick that landed today. And uh, to ensure that I don't have any more of these uh, address slip-ups, I think maybe it's just better if I uh, keep the address flipped over. Even though I blacked it out. That way I never have to worry about slipping up. Uh, today's uh, dope is brought to us from Blue Creek Knives, baby. That's right. Uh, let's see. What are we going to use for an unboxing knife? Today's unboxing knife is a good one. We're talking about the CJRB Echo. Loving this knife. Really trying to get the uh, Knife Center exclusive. But I have not been able to do that yet because they are sold out. But I did order it. Okay. Just the fact that I tell you it's Blue Creek that may have given it away. Okay. But if not, this definitely will. We're talking, what do they got? Anything extra in here? Okay, yeah. We got a couple of stickers. We're talking about the Devo Mash version two. We didn't get a sticker with the first one. As a matter of fact, we didn't get much of shit, just a knife, baby. Um, the box appears to be the same. I think the lettering may look a little bit different. But um, one thing I'll definitely give Devo credit for is ever since the, the very first release, they've always given us a, pr a quality presentation. You know, I know some people think that doesn't matter, but it fucking does. It matters, bro. You know, that's the first thing you see is that goddamn box. So why not have uh, a good presentation? All right, enough of that. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Still no pouch. There was no pouch with version one. And there is still no pouch with version two. But I don't recall version one coming wrapped like this. So that's changed. Oh, uh, Kubi is the OEM for the, uh, the mash. Oh, I like the color though. Um, I had version one. As a matter of fact, I did a video on version one when I had uh, first started the YouTube. Let's drop the top on this bit, shall we? There we go. I had did a video on version one, um, but when I found out version two was coming, I sold my version one. I didn't feel that I needed two of these knives. Um, and I wanted to, you know, they, they, they alleged that there's been some changes done, some improvements. So I really wanted to check it out. You know, I, I, I have no problem uh, admitting that I am a, a big supporter of Devo and all they do. Um, Colin Mason Pierre, one half of Devo, is a great guy. Uh, Lefty, not so much. <laughs> I'm fucking with you. Both of them are great. Lefty's been great. He's, he's phenomenal, man. Um, but, you know, they're really big on doing a lot for the community. So whatever I can do to support them, buying their knives I, I try to do that uh enough of that let's take a look at it Woo! detent is dialed the fuck in all right let's go over the specs and then we'll talk more about the improvements overall length on this is 7.5 inches uh blade lengths coming in at 3.3 inches uh we've got a blade stock thickness of 11 hundreds of an inch once again, we have an illustrious uh, black wash finish on 14C28N blade steel. Our uh, handle thickness is coming in at 47 hundredths of an inch. The uh, blade length height, which is this, is 1.1 inch. Uh, handle height, which is the same, is uh, 0.96 of an inch. Overall weight on this is 3.8 ounces. Uh, price tag on this is $135.99. That's, of course, before using any 10% uh, discount code. This is a Blue Creek Knives exclusive. Um, so the only place you're going to be able to find this, unless it's a secondary, would be Blue Creek. Um, they, made, they did keep that uh, wire pocket clip. Now, also, there are two versions of this knife, which uh, were not around the first time. This one you see in front of you comes with these blue anodized handles. 
and then your uh, black wash blade. And then the other version was a black PVD coated um, handle with a satin finish blade. Something, um, these handles look a little weird, kind of. Now I did hear him mention something about possibly there being some oil on it when you first got it um, to kind of consider that. Let me just do something right quick before we continue. Just make sure I don't have any oil on here. See if that changes the appearance. I mean, it looks good. I don't want to get you fuckers all in a frenzy, but it looks good. Um, now to some of the changes. I can tell you out the gate, one of the changes they mentioned, and I can definitely tell, is that detent. Um, they have adjusted the detent ball placement which is going to result in a more snappy, more consistent, snappy detent. I can honestly tell you, version one left some to be desired. The detent was was medium. You know, it was a medium detent. It was not what I would have expected coming from the detent diva himself. Um, you know, it was serviceable. Let's put it to you that way. I, I, I could easily fail version one on the, the deployment. Let, let's give it a try with version two. I'm trying to fail this, people. Yeah, if I if I kind of block it, of course, yeah. But no, it's it's very hard to fail. A lot harder than version one was. I can I can guarantee you that. Uh, also, something else that they claim to have uh, improved on that I can also validate is they tightened uh, tightened up the tolerances on the actual liners uh, in an attempt to reduce the vibration. Version one, whenever you would deploy it. Was there was a lot of vibration, you know? It sounded like like a hollow sound almost is the best way I can explain it. Um, that's gone. It sounds solid. Uh, it just sounds more premium. I know that's weird, but it's it's true. Um, also, they did um, they claim that they added a slight concave to the um, stop pin where your stop pin your stop pin area the stop pin landing actually. Uh, they did that to improve durability. Trying to remember if they, I really wish I'd have kept version one around long enough to kind of compare it side by side. Uh, but once I found out that you were not going to be able to uh, like change blades or anything like that, I really felt there was no need for me to keep it. So I just sold it and, and moved on to the next one. Um, and then the last uh, improvement they made was they adjusted the plunge grind near the tip uh, to make um, the spine of the blade more centered with the handle and i can see that you know and then they also um improved this hollow grind i think they went deeper on it but that looks good feels more slicey for sure I, I it would be interesting to have some specs for you um, but i don't have a caliper and i don't have version one laying around all right real quick let's throw up some other knives for some size comparison in case numbers don't do it for you let's start out by keeping it in the family the matriarch of the Devo family is the Stout. So there you see the mash up against the Stout. Very, very, uh, I'd say almost dead money. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I'd say about dead money with that. So there you see it up against that. Let's go into the extended family over here, which is the Kubi Royale. That's a Colin Mason Pierre design. This is the knife that started it all for Devo, actually. Um, it was this knife that Kevin was inspired by and initially drew the uh, first rendition of the stout on a napkin. And here we are today, all because of that. So basically this uh, Royale is responsible for it all. Very important knife. So the mash is uh, bigger than the Royale, dead money with the stout. Next up, we're gonna put it up there against the Penguin Plus. I feel is uh, direct competition for the, uh, for the mash. The uh, Penguin Plus is bigger overall than the mesh and actually the penguin plus is a little bit more expensive than the mesh so you know you're getting quality materials with both of them you do get a you know to me 14c i prefer 14c over 20 cv anyway so the mesh is a no-brainer if you're comparing them two let's put up another one this is a whole nother price bracket but being that i just got it i want to put it up here for some size comparison and that is the chavez 229 with the kickstop, uh, that is bigger than both of these knives. Let's do two mo, goddammit, two mo. 
can't I can't just do an all overseas uh, lineup. Gotta have some goddamn American vibes. What's better than the uh, legendary Spyderco PM3? So the mash is bigger than the PM3. And you may ask, what well, what's better than the PM3? The goddamn PM2. Tonto apparatus. There you see that. PM2 is a big knife. So you should expect the um, expect that when it comes to size comparison on these. Well, what do I got to say? Version 2. I wish they would have dropped version 2 instead of version 1. But... That's kind of a revisionist history. No, I'm happy with it, man. Like I did say, I did I did get rid of version one, but I'm I'm definitely more happy so far with version two. I like this configuration with the blue anna with the black wash blade. I think the first time around I got regular uh, stone wash uh, handles with black wash blade. Kubi does a great job with the black wash. Um, it's like a matte finish. It just looks good, man. Looks damn good. I think the other version that you could get for this uh, MASH 2.0 is a black PVD handle with a satin blade. But um, that's not my gig. You know, whenever you have 14C, it is a softer steel and it's so easy to scratch. So that's the main reason why I stay away from the uh, the satin finishes on 14C. I've literally had cardboard, cardboard scratch up my fucking blade. True story. There you fuckers have it. MASH 2.0. Now on deck. What you boys think? What you ladies think? Did you pick it up? Are you gonna pick it up? Let me know in the comments. I wanna hear all about it. Love you, mean it. Until the next time, cut something. Cut someone. Just don't cut yourself. Stay dangerous, fuckers! <laughs>